Rotator cuff tears. Rotator cuff tear is a common source of shoulder pain. It can involve a tendon or several tendons. The patient presents with a painful weak shoulder. It occurs more in the older population and in patients older than 80 years old, 50% will have cuff tears. The majority are asymptomatic. Partial thickness or full thickness tears can progress in size and can increase in symptoms. Evaluation. When you examine the patient, you will find a younger than 40 years old with a history of trauma or older than 60 years old with no history of trauma. Between 40 to 60 years old, you can have either trauma or no trauma. Clinical presentation. Patient will have pain or ache, usually posteriorly. The pain can be in the arm or the shoulder. The patient will complain of pain during overhead activity and when they try to reach behind the back. Patient may also complain of night pain. Night pain means non-operative treatment will not work. Patient also complain of weakness. You may find rotator cuff tear in spinal cord injury patients due to overuse syndrome. So let's go for the exam. We will inspect first and we may find infraspinatus atrophy, which means a chronic tear. It can also mean suprascapular nerve injury. We will palpate the AC joint. It often has an AC joint pathology, so check that. The greater tuberosity, the coracoid process, and the biceps. Then we'll do range of motion, active and passive. The range of motion, active probably will be limited. You will do the near and Hawkins impingement signs followed by strength testing patient will have weakness of abduction that will test the supraspinatus function and also you will test the external rotation with the arm to the side that will test the infraspinatus function a horn blower sign, it means massive tear that involve the teres minor. Drop arm test, testing the supraspinatus function. For the subscapularis, we have at least three tests. Number one, the liftoff test, which tests the upper subscapularis. The patient is unable to hold the hand behind the back. And the belly press test will test the lower subscapularis, sometimes called abdominal compression test. Number three is excessive passive external rotation. And when the subscapularis is torn, usually it pulls with that biceps tendon medially. Please check that. Then you need to check the deltoid strength to make sure you have a functional deltoid muscle. So what is the tear size? It can be small, up to one centimeter, medium from one to three, large from three to five, massive, more than five, or involve multiple tendons. Once the clinical diagnosis is established, then you will do some x-rays, you will get the true AP view, you will check the acromiohumeral interval, which normally between 7 to 14 millimeter. And you will get an MRI. The T2 images are the best for showing the tear. The sagittal view can help you in seeing the muscle atrophy, the fat, and the retraction of the muscle. It can tell you if the case is chronic or acute. 
Also, if you use a dye with the MRI, it can help you in showing the partial thickness tears. If you have a pacemaker, you will use CT arthrography. Some people use ultrasound. Just remember the MRI will have a lot of false positives, especially in the elderly population. Then treatment. Usually treatment starts with physiotherapy, non-steroidal, and possibly some injection, but surgery is usually done when you have a traumatic tear and when you have failure of the conservative treatment. A complete tear will not heal by itself. You need to suture the tendon back to its insertion on the humerus. And when the tear is large or the patient is older, the prognosis of successful repair is not as good. And when you have muscle atrophy and fatty infiltration, that will also have a poor prognosis. Thank you for listening. I hope I was helpful.